If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People, November 4th, 2008. My name is uh, John Eggers. I live on the shores of Lake Julie with my wife, uh, Kathy. We moved here about seven years ago. Uh, I am a writer and I am an educator and I enjoy public speaking. I came to Bemidji to be principal of Red Lake High School. And when we moved to Lake Julia, I was intrigued that how did Lake Julia get its name? And so I wrote the book In Search of Beltrami's Heart, named after, of course, Giacomo Beltrami, which this county is named after. When we moved to Lake Julia seven years ago, I was uh, intrigued by the story behind it. Uh, of course, I lived in Beltrami County for about 30 years, but no one ever really told me the story about how it got its name. And so when we moved to Lake Julia, I was a member of the Beltrami County Historical Society, and the members there kept talking about, well, do you know the story about Giacomo Beltrami? And I didn't, so that really inspired me to look more into it, and of course, since I live on Lake Julia, I wanted to know how it got its name. When I first began writing the book, I had intended to write it as an adult book, but then in doing the research about the story, I found that there were two or three other books that already had been written about Giacomo Beltrami, and also, of course, he had his own two very lengthy diaries about his travels in Europe, in the United States, and Mexico, and they tell a story about his adventures as well. So I decided it really is a story of adventure, intrigue, a little bit of romance. So why not make it into a children's book? What I knew about the history already was really not much. And I think that's probably true of most people in Beltrami County, that they know the county is named Beltrami, but they don't know how it got its name. And very few know about the story about Giacomo Beltrami. Giacomo was a man who came from a learned family. He had 16 brothers and sisters. He came out of Pergamo, Italy, and his father was in the judicial system, so he had some money. But he was intrigued about adventure. He was intrigued with languages. He had a penchant for learning about other cultures, and he traveled through Europe initially, and then he went to Liverpool, England, and came from Liverpool then to the United States. And when he came to the United States, he had a visit with President Monroe which was interesting because in those days, you could actually go to the White House and knock on the door and President Monroe would answer the door and you could go in and visit President Monroe. But anyway, President Monroe, I think, well, if you really want an adventure, you should go out west. As Giacomo made his way out west, he encountered many Native Americans. And so he really tried to draw the Native Americans out and learn about their culture, learn some of their language. And along the way, he began to collect all kinds of Native American artifacts which uh, are now in a museum in Pergamo, Italy. But I think that was probably the most interesting thing that Giacomo learned in the United States, other than the fact that it was a wilderness, a lot of things yet to be discovered. When he left Washington, D.C., he traveled up to St. Louis, and from St. Louis on a boat called the Virginian, which was the first steamship to go up the Mississippi. Along the way, there were many Native Americans uh, living, and he would, the boat would stop, and he would uh, get out, and he would begin trading uh, with them. And he did this all the way up through Minnesota, then into the Minnesota Territory, and, uh, and even on the way back. He just kept trading uh, with Native Americans to get certain artifacts that he enjoyed and put them in his canoe. Well, when uh, Giacomo came to Minnesota was not a state at the time, it was still a territory, and he came to Fort Snelling, which at the time was not called Fort Snelling, it was called Fort St. Anthony. But when he arrived at Fort Snelling, the Colonel Snelling told him about a map-making group that was going to leave shortly. He persuaded the Major Long at the time, who was not a very friendly person, to take Giacomo with him. And so he didn't want to do it because he thought Giacomo really didn't know his way around the wilderness very well. And but Colonel Snelling liked Giacomo and he persuaded Major Long to take him. And when they arrived at the town of Pembina, which is northwest of here, right near the Canadian border, 
uh, then that's when they parted companies and Giacomo went his way and Major Long went his way to continue his map making journey. Giacomo, who didn't really learn how to paddle a canoe very well, and of course these were birch bark canoes and they were probably very tippy, not like our canoes today, and he just could not navigate that canoe very well and it shows him pulling the canoe, which he did, up the river full of the things that he had collected and we see here that he used his umbrella to protect his artifacts from the sun. This part of Beltrami County is really rich in Giacomo Beltrami history. If you can envision him coming from a city, Pembina, in northwestern Minnesota and Dakota, and then traveling down to Red Lake back in the 1820s, and then from Red Lake, through his Native American friends, he was talking to them about, well, do you know where the source of this great river is? And of course they knew, because they had been here, so sure, we can take you there. And so he left uh, Red Lake, went up a river called the Mud River, which is still there today, and then into Lake Pupaski, which was Mud Lake at one time, and that of course is still there today, and then from Lake Pupaski into Lake Julia. And when he came to Lake Julia, he climbed uh, what we think was probably Buena Vista behind us, that big hill, the big ski hill there, and notice that the waters from Lake Julia flowed north and they flowed south. And he proclaimed this to be the farthest point north for the Mississippi. Well, when I talked to our students about Giacomo Beltrami, I mentioned that this is a book about adventure and about having dreams. And when Giacomo left Italy in 1820, he was in his 40s. He was more or less exiled from Italy because he had served with the Napoleon army initially and Napoleon did not have a good name in Italy, and so he was really kind of forced out of Italy, but had this idea that he wanted to do something special for somebody. When he was in uh, Italy, he became very close friends with a woman by the name of Giulia Medici, and she was from the Medici family. She cared for Giacomo, and by the time he left for the United States, she had passed away. But because uh, they were such good friends, I'm not sure exactly the nature of their friendship, but he wanted to do something special for her. And so he had this dream about doing something. He wasn't sure what it was, but nevertheless, that, that's what he wanted to do. And when he came to the United States, traveled up to Mississippi to Lake Julia, he thought because this was the farthest point north of Mississippi, he says, I'm gonna name this after my friend in Italy, Lake Julia. I don't think at the time that he knew that this was the Continental Divide, but he was intrigued by the fact that the waters flowed in, in both directions at the time. South of Lake Julia is a little lake called Summit Lake, and then south of Summit Lake is Little Turtle Lake. And at one time, the waters from Lake Julia, there was a stream or a creek or a river that flowed into those two lakes, which is no longer there now. It was blocked by roads and so on. But the river going north into eventually Red Lake and then also into the Hudson Bay, believe it or not, is still there. Giacomo knew there was a western source of the Mississippi as well. And this is one of the mistakes that he made along the way was that he knew there was a western source in the Mississippi because the Native Americans had told him that. But he didn't take time to go there. Had he take time to go to the Mississippi and discover the westernmost source, well, he would have been given credit that Schoolcraft is given credit today. And that was in 1932 when Schoolcraft discovered the westernmost source. But he was uh, just interested in, I think, in leaving the mosquitoes and the forest behind and just wanted to get back to civilization at Fort Snelling. And so he did not go. Well, Beltrami never really got the recognition that he should have received. As I say in my book here, it's the Minnesota's forgotten hero. He really is a forgotten hero in Minnesota, even though that this county was named after him, Beltrami County, people don't really recognize the hardship that he endured during those weeks in the 1820s when he traveled through Minnesota on his own. He again had a lot of encounters with Native Americans and with other people having to navigate this canoe up the rivers and through Red Lake and back up here to Lake Julia. I mean, it was really a struggle for him to do that. And the fact that he 
At the time, in 1823, when he declared that this was the farthest point north of Mississippi, it could have been, you know, and when the people living around Lake Julie today believe that it still is. We believe that there's seepage going under Lake Julia Drive, which is south of Lake Julia that flows into this little summit lake and eventually into Little Turtle Lake and then on down eventually into Cass Lake and down to the Mississippi. So he, he was a forgotten hero that I, I think should be recognized more. And I've always hoped that maybe sometime in the future that maybe there could be even a statue of Beltrami someplace in, in Bemidji. So here we are on top of Buena Vista. Buena Vista was a good name for this location because in Spanish it means good view. So in 1823 when Giacomo Beltrami came up on top of this hill, he looked over and saw Lake Julia and he thought, boy, this is a pretty good view. And he was right, it's a magnificent view. Well, Beltrami had just spent three or four weeks in the wilderness and this was his mission to find the source, the northernmost source of the Mississippi. And again, he named it after his friend in Italy, Julia. He named this Lake Julia, where the waters flow north to the Hudson Bay and the waters flow south to the Gulf of Mexico. And he looked at this lake and he said, you know, this is such a beautiful lake. And he thought it was, and it is kind of a heart-shaped lake. And if you read in his diaries, he identifies it as a heart-shaped lake where the waters flow to the north and to the south. And as Buena Vista says, it's just a, it can't be better. Probably the best overall view in Beltrami County is right here on top of Buena Vista. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.